The argand diagram is a way to represent complex numbers graphically. We cannot put a complex number like 2 plus 3i on the real axis. So what we do is we use two axes to represent two parts of a complex number. One axis to represent the real part of the complex number and another axis to represent the imaginary part of a complex number. So if we want to show the point 2 plus 3i, what we do is we go two units on our real axis. So this horizontal axis is called the real axis. And we go uh, plus three units on our imaginary axis. So the vertical axis is called the imaginary axis. So we get this point here. So this point represents a single complex number, the complex number 2 plus 3i. It is just like plotting the point 2, 3 in coordinate geometry. X is 2, Y is 3. Actually, we called the general form of a complex number X plus YI. That was back in the first video, where X is the real part and Y is the imaginary part. Let's plot the complex number minus 3 minus 4i. Well, the real part is minus 3, so we go to minus 3 on the real or horizontal axis, and we go 4 units, negative 4 units on the imaginary axis. So it's like pot plotting the point minus 3 minus 4. So this point here represents the single complex number, minus 3 minus 4i. What about the complex number i? Well, i can be written as 0 plus 1i. So it's just like plotting the point 0, 1. So x are the real value is 0, and y are the imaginary value is 1. So this point here is represent, represents the number i, which is the square root of minus 1, of course. Then we could plot the complex number minus 4i, which is the same as 0 minus 4i, or it's like plotting the point 0 minus 4. This point here is the complex number minus 4i. Now, what about the real number 3? Well, as I explained in the first video, real numbers are a subset of the complex numbers. All the real numbers will appear on this axis here. Three, the number 3 can be thought of as 3 plus 0i, so it's like plotting the point 3, 0. So it's just this point here, of course, you're familiar with that. This is the point 3. Well, 3 is already written there, so I won't write it. So all the real numbers go on this horizontal line. You can see that it's a subset of the entire plane. The pure imaginary numbers go along this axis here. These are numbers whose real part is 0. Things like i, 2i, basically multiples of i. Of course, there's no necessity for the real or imaginary parts to be integers. The real or imaginary parts could be any real numbers. So, for example, if we wanted to plot the complex number 1 minus 5i, it's equivalent to plotting the point 1 comma minus 1.5. So, 1 minus 1.5 is this point here. So, this is the complex number 1 minus 1.5i. Let's look at the real number 0. Well, 0 is the complex number 0 plus 0i. Zero that's just like plotting the point 0, 0. So that's the origin of our Argan diagram. The next thing I want to discuss is transformations of complex numbers in the complex plane. We can also refer to this as the complex plane. Um, so you can see we have our real and imaginary axes. We want to find the image of the complex number 2 plus 3i under these four transformations. Now the first transformation, S sub x, basically means axial symmetry in the x-axis. Well, I could call the x-axis the real axis. Okay, so it means this axis here. So let's locate the point 2 plus 3i. Its real part is 2, its imaginary part is 3. So it's this point here. And we want to get its image under axial symmetry in this axis. That's the first question. So axial symmetry means we just imagine folding the complex plane over the x or real axis. and 
seeing what this point maps onto. It's also like getting a mirror image of, of the point. So 2 plus 3i will end up here. Okay, so we just move this point down perpendicularly through the real axis and go out the same distance on the other side. So whatever dis distance this is, the distance of the point to the real axis, we have to have the same distance on the other side. It's like a mirror image. The distance of the object in front of the mirror is equal to the distance of the image behind the mirror. So it's quite easy to see from the diagram what the answer is. It's 2 minus 3i. You can see that the real part, our x value, doesn't change. But the y part, our imaginary part of the complex number, changes sign, goes from plus 3 to minus 3. Now let's get the image of 2 plus 3i under Sy, which means axial symmetry in the y-axis, or imaginary axis. So we just move through here at right angles and go out the same distance on the other side. So it's quite easy to see what the answer is. It's minus 2 plus 3i. So you can see what happens. The real part plus 2 becomes minus 2. So the real part, our x-value, changes sign, but the imaginary part does not change sign. So you've seen this kind of thing in coordinate geometry. Now we want to get the image of 2 plus 3i under S0. Now this stands for central symmetry in the origin. This O stands for the origin. So now we're mapping this point through this point here. So it's a central symmetry. So this point is the center of the symmetry. So what do we do? Well, we just imagine connecting, connecting 2 plus 3i to the origin. And we go out the same distance on the other side. So it's quite easy to work this out. This is the answer here. Um, if you're not sure, what you could do is consider this triangle here and count the units here. Get the length of this side, which is 3. And then what you do is, at the central symmetry point, which is the origin, the center of the symmetry, just measure down this distance, measure down three units. Then we can look at the horizontal distance between 2 plus 3i and the origin. That horizontal distance is 2. So what we do is we just measure across 2 here. And there's the answer. So this line here will have the same length as this line here. We, we will have two similar triangles. Two equiangular, um, well, two congruent triangles, actually. They're equal in every way. Now, if we read off the coordinates of this point, we see that this number has a real part, minus 2, and its imaginary part is minus 3. So this point represents the complex number, minus 2, minus 3i. Now, in part 4, we want to get the image of 2 plus 3i under central symmetry in the point, minus 1 plus i. So this is what s uh, sub minus 1 plus i means. It means central symmetry in the point minus 1 plus i. Minus 1 plus i is actually here. Okay, the real part is minus 1. The imaginary part is a plus 1. So this is minus 1 plus i. We want to get the image of 2 plus 3i under central symmetry in this point. So let's look how we look at how we would do that by construction. Well, we just join these two points together. And after doing that, we just extend on here and go out the same distance as this line, as the length of this line here. Of course, we can just count squares. You see, to get the horizontal distance between these two points, we could go across here, which is a distance of 1, 2, 3. And we then have to go down this far. The vertical distance between the two points is 1, is 2. So we construct this triangle down here. So we go across 3, and we go down 2. So this is the solution. So this point here, if we read it off, has coordinates minus 4, comma, minus 1. So this point represents the complex number minus 4, minus 1i. I'll just write minus 4, minus i. That means 
the, the point minus 4 minus 1. So this line is the same length as this line here. <coughs> now, of course, we can do this without a diagram. So I'll run through that. I'll just write down the answer first, minus 4 minus i. And I'll run through how to do it without using a diagram. So we want to get the image of 2 plus 3i. We could think of that as the point 2, 3. Under central symmetry in the point minus 1 plus i, we can think of that as a point with coordinates minus 1, 1. And we have to figure out what this image is. Of course, we know the answer. It's going to be minus 4 minus 1. Of course, we can figure this out. You've seen this in coordinate geometry by looking at the difference in the real parts or x values. So we take minus 1, this value here, and subtract 2. So we get minus 3. And then we make this minus 3 as well. In other words, 2 minus 3 equals minus 1. Minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4. And we do the same for the imaginary parts or um, y values. We take this value here, which is 1, subtract this value, which is 3, we get minus 2. And then the difference here is also minus 2. You see 3 minus 2 equals 1. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. So we get the point with coordinates minus 4 minus 1, which corresponds to the complex number four min uh, minus 4 minus 1i. I'll do one more example of a transformation. Find the image of 2 plus 3i under the translation 1 minus i goes to or maps on to 3 minus 2i. So let's see where this translation is. The tail of the translation is at the point 1 minus i. 1 minus i is this point here. Real part 1, imaginary part minus 1. So that's the point 1 minus i. 3 minus 2i is a complex number of real part of 3 and imaginary part of minus 2. It's this point here. So we just join these up. And we have our translation. I can put an arrow on it like this. You can also think of it as, we can also call it a vector. So 1 minus i is the tail of this translation and 3 minus 2i is the head of it. So we want to get the image of 2 plus 3i under this translation. Let's do it using the diagram. Well, what we do is we just construct a triangle, a right angle triangle, on this translation. Um, so, we see that the vertical distance between these, between the endpoints of it is 1. It's just one square down. The horizontal distance here is 2. So we apply that those changes to 2 plus 3i. So you see that we went down one unit, so we go down one unit here, down one square, and we went across, we added on 2, increased the real value by 2, or the x value by 2. So 2 plus 3i ends up here. And now we can just read off what the coordinates of this point are. This point has coordinates 4, 2, so this point is the complex number 4, plus 2i. So basically what we did was move the point 2 plus 3i in the same direction as this translation here. So this line here is parallel to this line and we moved it the same distance. The distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here. So that's the idea of a translation. And you've probably seen this in coordinate geometry you could do this without a diagram. You could write 1 minus i as the point 1 comma minus 1 and write the complex number 3 minus 2i in in a coordinate geometry form as 3 comma minus 2. And to get the image of 2 plus 3i, we could write 2, 3 underneath here to represent 2 plus 3i and then work out what its image is. So you've probably done this before. We look at these differences here. 3 minus 1 is 2. And this is going to be 2 as well. So we have 2 plus 2. We're going to get 4 here. 
we also look at the y values, minus 1 to minus 2. Well, if we take this minus 2 and subtract this minus 1, minus 2 minus minus 1 is minus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1. In other words, minus 1 minus 1 gives us minus 2. So then we have 3 minus 1. If this is minus 1, this has to be minus 1 as well. 3 minus 1 gives 2. So we get to the point 4, 2, which is the complex number 4 plus 2i.